Ahoy Rovers! Well, in this episode, it's a race against the weather. In fact, it's a race against the weather for the next couple of weeks because the weather is cooling and with those cool temperatures, it makes it difficult to get the epoxy to thin out in the way I need it to thin out. That, and I've started working again full time at the technical college here teaching carpentry. So for the next few months, it's going to be a little bit stressful, but as we rovers always say, time to crack on. All right, so here we have it, the package. It arrived, and I know it came from one of our subscribers, Ray, all the way from Ireland, and he has sent this to me just in time for Christmas. Now let's see what's inside. It's well wrapped. These uh, may have to use some of these in the Wave Rover 650 as positive buoyancy. Okay, here we go. This is, let's see, how do we open this? Vesper Watchmate AIS Transponder. Okay, so I'm going to have to read up on this to see how it works. We've got the antenna here. 
and the cable and the splitter and then in this box let's see what we have we have the brain of the unit i believe oh maybe this is the splitter um anyway what we have here is an ais transmitter so Ray had reached out to me a little while ago and he said, you know, I've been following the channel for a while and in the channel I had said, well, the one thing I would change about the way I had Wave Rover set up was that I would like to have an AIS transmitter on my next boat because I just thought AIS, which I had never used before the last Wave Rover voyage, was just such an aid to the solo sailor it really didn't take very much power and it came through on the VHF but what a difference to be able to identify a ship by name a speed a closest point of approach and reach out to them by VHF and let them know you're there uh, it was it was wonderful and really gave me that feeling of security then when I thought about it I thought well wouldn't it be great if you had a transmitter so that those big ships could see me at about 20 miles know that I'm a sailboat under sail and I can even put a message there saying I'm a solo sailor so that they can have their heads up about them and they can contact me. Anyway, this was really fantastic. Thank you so much, Ray. Uh, this was wonderful. Just in time for Christmas. Um, thank you so much, my friend. Well, we're at a point now where we can take this, which is the transom, and start fitting it here where it belongs. But before I can do that, I have to trim this back, and I've put a line where I'll trim it to, and this line, it actually represents one inch out from the temporary frame, and the transom itself is three eighths, so it leaves, uh, sorry, three quarters, so it leaves a quarter inch gap. I'll trim that down a bit later. I just, uh, I feel as though I don't want it trimmed fully back until I get the transom at least dry fitted. Anyway, let's crack on with that. Well, the glue joint definitely worked because we've removed uh, some of the plywood there. Uh, not bad, not bad. All right, it's time to trim this down to its size. I've marked it, and we'll just cut it with the saw and then we'll fit it. Maybe we'll have to hit it with the planer after. All right, hearing protection on. Let's plug the saw in. All right, now that the saw is plugged in, let's try cutting this. The glue line looks absolutely marvelous all along. Very nice. Well, Rovers, I'm inside uh, the Wave Rover 650 right now, and I'm dismantling a lot of the uh, strong back parts of it that we don't really need anymore because after the transom is on, 
which I'll be doing hopefully in the next little while, then we won't be able to get back in here anymore. So there's a few steps I need to do before I can close this off. All right, time to crack on. So um, I'm just going to tell you, as far as the screws go, I use these, I reuse these all the time. These are the same screws that I've built many things with, and that's part of the advantage of using screws. Um, you're also getting a pretty good feeling for the kind of headroom that you're going to have inside the 650 here. They have to bear in mind this, uh, this wouldn't be here and these wouldn't be here, but you're probably talking headroom sort of like this uh, throughout most of the interior, with the exception, of course, where the doghouse is, where you'll have about another foot of headroom. So, um, I don't know if you're able to see that. Let me go a little farther back. So, about this much headroom. Uh, it's not bad. It's, uh, it's what I was thinking, you know. It's, it's the type of headroom uh, that I would want on a little boat going to sea because when the boat is in a seaway you are not standing up. A lot of people think that's uh, oh I need room to stretch out. You are hanging on in a little boat in a sea and uh, or you're laying down or you're sitting down or you're cooking while you're sitting down, you're navigating while you're sitting down. So if when you want to stand up you have to go outside to the cockpit and then you can stretch out all you want um, but as far as being inside the boat to stretch out means really laying down in the bunk and the bunks are really really generous they are uh, eight feet in length and even though I know you don't need eight feet the, the thing is there's uh, a bit of storage space at the foot of each bunk and that'll of course be very very dry storage space or, it'd be practically impossible for any spray or water to ever get to the spot like that. So that's where I would keep my cameras or special electronics or uh, books or papers uh, very safe. Anyway, uh, the next step now is to install some heaters in here. Back inside now, we'll just um, move these to where they're going to do some good work for us. I just tested them so they're actually quite hot. Thank you very much guys. Now I gotta mix a bunch of fish. Is that a special mixture? It's um, wood flour and microfibers. Okay. So the microfibers are basically chopped up um, fiberglass. Right. So it's uh, quite structural when the epoxy is mixed. And wood flour is just uh, fine sawdust like from a sander right so uh, it's you know wood is what the whole boat is made of so it's yes. between wood epoxy and the fiberglass it's uh, it's like a wood product or a composite you've got to move fast with this stuff because it's it has a very short time 
And you layer all of this with fiberglass? Yeah, it'll get uh, not just normal fiberglass, but a special type of fiberglass that's extra strong. Okay. Is that one of those cross weaves? Yes, it's a bi cross weave or yeah. bi weave. Or but bi axle is what okay. this one's called. Yeah. Well, you're getting quite the, uh, quite the education there from YouTube. Uh, you know all this stuff. <laughs> Well, the transom turned out pretty nice, and uh, all I have to do is touch it up a little bit more with the plane and the sander, and I'll do that right away. I've already taken a couple of passes off with the power plane just to uh, get a better look at the joints, and um, they're looking really good, you know, and it certainly kicked off. It's hard, and it's a positive bond. It's all very good. Try to get an overview. I'm in the very, very back of the boat shed here. There we go. Looking good. Well, I've taken the block plane and the power plane to it. I've knocked basically a 45 off all the way around. And I've uh, cleaned up the glue joint so that when we hit it with the sander, which is the next step, uh, the sander won't, well, you know, clog up as much. But it's looking pretty good already. It's one of those cases where the more you do this, the better you get. All right, the transom is in, and I've, uh, you know, I've, I've sanded it now, and it's, it's, looking, it's looking pretty good. I don't think it needs a whole lot more. I need to fill some of these little pinholes that, were, uh, that happened during the big glue-up. Uh, that was to be expected, and then, of course, it'll get coated, and then we'll be glassing it with a biaxle uh, heavy weave fiberglass um, tabbing, if you will. And... Uh, but one of the things I wanted to bring your attention to is, you know, use your eyes when you're when you're sanding. You've got all kinds of uh, things you can look for, like the plies, uh, the individual plies in the plywood. They'll help you kind of keep on track to 
uh, making sure that you're not going too deep in one area. But something probably even more important is learning to see with your hands. And you'll see me doing this quite often, no matter what tool I'm using or what thing I'm doing, whether it's cutting or sanding or shaping, I, I tend to put your, my hand on it because your hand can really feel uh, if there's any incon inconsistencies uh, that your eye isn't picking up. So uh, just, just a point, you know, you, you might already be doing it whether you realize it or not, but you've got to learn to see with your hands. I know it sounds bizarre, but it's one of those things that craftsmen have done through the ages. Anyway, time to crack on with the next step. I'd like to take a minute to honor two new names to our benefactors bulkhead, John Pomer and Brian Strawichny. Now these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the Wave Rover project. And their names will be going on a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. These donations truly are much appreciated. Thank you. Well, Rovers, the hull is largely complete. The transom is on, the chines are on, uh, everything's been glued into place. So how long did it take? It took about eight weeks to get to this point. Now I wasn't, I wasn't killing myself. I'm sure many of you could do it much faster. The next big step is for me to fill the holes, look for any um, gaps that I've missed, fill them, and then finish the prep work off in order that we can start fiberglassing, which is the next big step. But as always, Rovers, Thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>